All right, let's talk about this because this is actually a really big deal and it's way more interesting than it sounds at first. Samsung has officially announced the Exodos 2600. This is their brand new in-house chip built on a two nanometer process and it's expected to power the Galaxy S26 series. Now, yeah, two nanometer already sounds fancy and powerful, but that's not even the most important part here. The real magic is a small design change that could make the Galaxy S26 feel way smoother in everyday use. And this part honestly got me excited. So first, quick context. This info comes from a very reliable leaker on Weibo. This person has been on fire lately, getting a lot of stuff right. And according to them, Samsung made a bold move with the Exynos 2600. They removed something that almost every phone chip has, low-end cores. Let me explain this in a very simple way. Inside your phone's processor, there isn't just one brain. There are multiple cores and they all do different jobs. Think of it like a team. You have the big, strong cores. These are used when you're gaming, editing video, or doing something heavy. They're fast, but they also use more power. Then you have middle cores. These handle normal stuff, opening apps, scrolling social media, switching between apps, browsing the web. These are super important because this is what you do all day. And then, usually, you have low-end cores. These are tiny, very power-efficient cores. They handle background stuff, things like syncing emails, location services, notifications, small system tasks. They save battery, but they're also very weak. Now, here's the problem. These low-end cores get overwhelmed easily. Modern phones do a lot in the background, way more than people realize. And when these low-end cores can't keep up, they pass their tasks to the stronger cores. That handoff causes delays, tiny pauses, little stutters, micro lag. You might not always notice it clearly, but you feel it. The phone just doesn't feel smooth. Animations hitch, app switching feels off. The phone feels fast on paper, but not fast in your hand. Samsung looked at this and said, why are we even doing this? So with the Exynos 2600, they completely removed those low-end cores, gone. Instead, Samsung replaced them with more middle-level cores. This is huge, because now even the background tasks are handled by cores that are actually strong enough to keep up. That means fewer handoffs, fewer delays, and way less stuttering. This is exactly the kind of change that doesn't show up clearly in specs, but you feel it every single day. Things like switching between apps when you have a lot open, pulling down menus, moving around the system UI, even the menus inside games, location services running while you're doing other stuff, all of that should feel smoother, not faster for one second, smoother all the time. And honestly, that's what people really want. Now, let's talk about the 2 nanometer part, but again in simple terms. Smaller number means more transistors packed into the chip. More transistors means better performance and better efficiency, so the chip can be faster while also using less power. This is cutting-edge stuff. Not many companies can even do this. Samsung manufacturing a 2 nanometer chip is a big achievement by itself. But what makes this interesting is that Samsung didn't just rely on the smaller size, they also changed how the chip is designed. And that shows maturity. For years, Exynos chips have been, let's be honest, hit or miss. Sometimes good, sometimes not so good. Often compared to Snapdragon and not always in a good way. But this time feels different. According to early Exynos 2600 benchmarks, this chip is actually beating the competition in multiple areas, not just matching, but surpassing in some cases. And that's wild. This is the first time in many generations where Exynos is not just catching up, but actually pulling ahead in certain aspects. And yeah, the 2 nanometer process helps a lot, but removing the low-end cores and focusing on stronger middle cores plays a massive role in real-world performance. Benchmarks are nice, but daily use is what matters. I've always believed Samsung could do something special with Exynos. Look at Apple. Apple designs its own chips, and because of that, iPhones feel incredibly smooth, even with smaller batteries or lower RAM numbers on paper. Samsung is trying to move in that direction. 
Now, will Samsung reach Apple-level hardware and software synergy? Probably not fully. Android runs on many phones, so it's not as tightly controlled as iOS. But still, designing your own chip gives you way more control over performance, over efficiency, over how the phone feels. And this move with the Exynos 2600 shows Samsung is thinking about experience, not just numbers. Another thing I want to point out is consistency. Most phones feel fast when you first buy them. The problem is after months of use. Apps update, background processes grow, the system gets heavier. Low-end cores suffer the most in those situations. By removing them, Samsung is basically future-proofing the phone a bit more. The Galaxy S26 should hold up better over time. It should feel smoother not just on day one, but months later too. That's something people don't talk about enough. Now, imagine this combined with Samsung's display tech. High refresh rate, smooth animations, fast storage, good RAM management. If Samsung gets the software tuning right, the Galaxy S26 can feel insanely fluid. Not just powerful, fluid. And that's the word I keep coming back to, fluid. This also explains why people who tried early builds or heard early reports are saying the phone feels smoother rather than just faster. Speed is one thing, smoothness is another. And smoothness is harder to fake. You either have it or you don't. So yeah, I'm genuinely excited about this. And that's not something I say lightly when it comes to Exynos. This feels like a turning point. Samsung didn't just chase numbers, they fixed a real problem that affects everyday use. And if this works as expected, the Galaxy S26 could be one of the smoothest Android phones out there. Not because of marketing, not because of buzzwords, but because of smart design choices. Let me know what you think about this move. Do you care more about benchmarks or how smooth a phone feels day to day? Because honestly, I'll take smoothness every time.